It's Dr. Micah Yu here, board certified rheumatologist, integrated medicine and functional medicine as well. And today we're gonna to be talking about fatigue. There are many people who are suffering from fatigue and chronic fatigue, and there are not many answers out there at this time. In this video, I'm gonna address the root causes of fatigue. So if you're interested in fatigue or you have fatigue, then keep watching. When we have fatigue as a symptom, as a clinician, we want to make sure there's no underlying disease that is causing the fatigue. So first, I'm going to go over the conventional medicine diagnoses that can have fatigue as a symptom, and then I'm going to address the integrative functional medicine approaches and causes of fatigue. Why don't you comment below and tell me if you have fatigue and whether you use conventional medicine or integrative medicine to approach fatigue and how do you treat it. Fatigue is different than chronic fatigue syndrome. You can get fatigue from a disease, but chronic fatigue syndrome is a diagnosis we give patients when all underlying root causes are investigated. And we find that there's no clear etiology that can be causing the issue that we have found so far. And chronic fatigue syndrome is also known as ME, or myalgic encephalomyelitis. It's a long word, it's hard to pronounce, but it's called ME or CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome. The next system we need to think about is hematology and oncology. Does this patient have anemia? Are they low in their hemoglobin that can predispose them to fatigue? Or could it possibly have cancer? I mean, cancer is not the first thing I think about when a patient comes to me with fatigue, but that should be on our mind. But I'm looking for other symptoms as well. But fatigue could be one of the big symptoms of cancer. So that's what we have to keep in mind. Number three is, does this patient have an active infection? Do they have HIV, hepatitis? Were they bit by a bug recently? Do they have a flu, COVID? That's another thing we have to rule out. Number four is, Neurologic, does this patient have narcolepsy that's undiagnosed? Are they falling asleep in the middle of the day? Or do they have multiple sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease that can contribute to fatigue as well? So we gotta think about neurology diseases. Number five is psychiatric diseases. Does this patient have depression, anxiety? Are they having trouble sleeping because of these psychiatric illnesses? So that's one thing we have to think about as well. My favorite rheumatology, of course, I'm a rheumatologist. So when a patient comes to me with fatigue and they refer to me, I think of, does this patient have lupus? Does this patient have arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, myositis, scleroderma? So I think about all these different autoimmune diseases that can have fatigue as an actual symptom. And sometimes that's the first sign of their autoimmune disease. Another autoimmune disease that we don't think about, but it can have fatigue as a symptom is celiac disease. Patients that have celiac disease cannot tolerate gluten. And when they ingest gluten, they can get brain fog, they can get fatigue, some people get joint pain, neurologic issues, and of course, it can get GI effects, right? Gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea and abdominal pain. But yes, you can have fatigue with celiac disease. Other things I think about are heart disease, does this patient have congestive heart failure? Does this patient have heavy metal toxicity? Is this patient getting a vitamin D? Some patients I have seen, their vitamin D is like 11 when normal is 30. When you correct the vitamin D, the energy actually goes up. So you gotta make sure that these patients don't have vitamin deficiencies. Another thing that is overlooked often or not asked about enough is sleep apnea. Some patients, they snore in the middle of the night and they actually stop breathing for seconds at a time. And when they actually wake up, they're very, very tired and lethargic. So if a patient has sleep apnea, they need a CPAP machine or need to see a dentist to get a device to open up the airways so that they can be more energized throughout the day. So those are the conventional medical diagnoses that I think about when a patient comes to me for fatigue. And that's before I rule out chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, let's move on to part two where we talk about the integrative and functional medicine diagnoses and potential root causes that can cause fatigue. Number one is Lyme and tick-borne illnesses. Now, when patients have Lyme and other tick-borne illnesses, such as Babesia or Bartonella, there can be many other symptoms, but these patients are often very tired as well. So I think about that when I see patients with fatigue and I think about my functional medicine diagnoses. Number two are heavy metals. I mentioned this earlier, but more specifically, I think about lead, mercury, cadmium, arsenic, toxicity. 
sometimes these patients will have excess of these heavy metals and you can get tested through blood. You can also get tested through urine, depending on which heavy metal you're testing for. Number three, I think of mold and mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are metabolites of mold. I've seen some couple of mycotoxin illness patients in my own clinic. We often are exposed to mold in different areas of the world, but we don't think about it as a potential diagnosis as that's something that conventional doctors never ask about. They never ask about mold because we don't believe in it in the conventional medicine world. But in the integrative and functional medicine world, we do believe that mold can be a potential root cause. There's a lot of literature on mold and mycotoxin and fatigue is a potential symptom. So if there's ever a water leak or smells musty in a home or a workplace, we gotta consider mold as a potential root cause. Number four are nutrient deficiencies. Does this patient have a micronutrient deficiency such as zinc, copper, vitamins, magnesium that can potentially contribute to their fatigue. So you can get that through a simple blood draw. There's multiple labs out there where you can get a urine test as well. So that's really important to make sure to rule out and it's easily fixed once we find it. Number five is leaky gut. A lot of us do have leaky gut. However, having a leaky gut doesn't mean that we actually have to have symptoms. So it doesn't have to be clinically relevant. In functional medicine, we do talk about leaky gut and leaky gut syndrome. So when patients have a leaky gut syndrome, fatigue can be part of that symptom. Number six, this one might be surprising for you, but it's called EMF or electromagnetic fields. Now this is very down the rabbit hole of functional, uh, functional and integrative medicine, but EMF can potentially contribute to fatigue. So we're talking about EMF, we're talking about electric towers, cell phone towers, Wi-Fi, electric cars, um, cell phones. So that's something to be aware of. I'm not gonna go deep dive into it today, but some patients do have something called EMF sensitivity. That's something that needs to be addressed. So if some patients, they might be living near a cell phone tower or electric tower, power lines, and they don't know that might be causing their issue. So that's something that we need to be aware of and we need to talk about that in the future. A lot of people don't believe in this, but there is some evidence of this causing issues in our bodies. I mentioned earlier about hormonal imbalances, but sometimes we talk about female hormones and male hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol. All these hormones can contribute to fatigue if we don't address it. And finally, I wanna talk about trauma. Trauma can be a root cause of fatigue and autoimmune disease as well. Does this patient have any physical trauma, emotional trauma that they're dealing with at the workplace or at home? Sometimes that can be a root cause of fatigue if not addressed. And sometimes patients do need therapy to address that. All right, so that comes to the end of potential root causes of fatigue before we can say the patient has chronic fatigue syndrome. Chronic fatigue syndrome can come from all these functional medicine diagnoses, right? If you have exhausted all potential diagnoses in the conventional medicine world, it's time to take a look at the integrated and functional medicine diagnoses and root causes of fatigue. If you like this video, please make a comment below to tell me what it helped you with, what you were surprised with, and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as well. All right, I'll see you next time. I know.